Well, good morning. I want to welcome everybody to worship this morning. I want to invite you to join in and sing with us wherever you are this morning. Let's worship together. thankful that we'll be able to 
enjoy one another's fellowship soon and very soon. God, as we come to worship you today, we pray that you would be with us, that you would speak to us, God, that we would experience you in a new and greater way, and that, Lord, this time will be meaningful and life-changing because you touch our hearts, God. Speak to us through the music. Speak to us through your holy word today, God. In life-changing and wonderful ways. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now check out this video and see kind of what it's going to look like, maybe sort of, kind of, for next week. While I don't think that you will enter the twilight zone whenever we reopen on June 21st, we just think that it might be a good idea to give you a walkthrough to show you some things that we need to happen in order for our families to remain safe while we're praising God. Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed, a poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. We're going to have two entrances as we try to accommodate the folks that are coming in for in-person worship. One of them over at the traditional service is the main entrance way. As you can see, all the doors are remaining open. We have Troy and AJ here that are wearing masks. We also ask that our congregation, all of our congregation, except for our wee ones, to wear masks for the safety of singing and also speaking in general. Inside, once you get in, you will be asked, if you don't mind, to stop at a Germex station, a sanitizing station, where you will be given some hand sanitizer in order to uh, help out with our guidelines. As you are coming up the hallway, we ask that you try to refrain from touching any of the walls as our walls will have been, and our entire building really, will have been sanitized, especially for our preschool area. And normally we'll, we have some get togethers like our breakfast, but until after our guidelines are completely followed and some things start happening as far as the coronavirus going down, we can no longer serve breakfast. Hey boys, no grits. What? As you can see, our preschool is starting to open back up again, which is wonderful. What a ministry for our church to have. But on the day that we reopen and for several weeks after that, these doors right here will probably remain closed for sanitation purposes for our little bitty ones and for that special ministry. As you're coming in, you will notice that you will have an assistant to guide you on where you need to sit. Alrighty. So, notice that Troy is pointing to the second seat. The way that our guidelines state is that we try to make sure that we're skipping every other seat in order for us to be properly social distancing. We want to give you the opportunity to still be able to give your offering. We will not take and offering during the church service, but we would like for you to place it in the receptacles at the entrances that you came into as you are entering the service for the first time. Also, you have the option of using our online giving link that can be found on our Facebook page or better still our church website 
We ask to, to take care of your greeting time either before church, before the service has started, or after church when the service is over in the parking lot. We ask that you give air hugs, air high fives, and also singing heart loves if you just feel you gotta while you're here in our sanctuary. There will be no children's church, children's moment, or even a nursery. You know your child. If they can handle uh, coloring and whatnot, hey, bring that for them. So guys, we want to make sure that everybody enjoys being back together, but we also need to look out for everybody's safety. All right, guys, let's praise God and just be joyous and just love getting back together with you guys. All right, see you June 21st. Yay! Hey, y'all, let's join together as we have victory in Jesus.
One of the things that's been going on with our church this week is that our children have had vacation Bible school. And while it's looked a little different this year than it has in years past, much of it being online, they've gotten together each evening on, on a Zoom app to do crafts together and to, to work on some little projects and things like that. And every night they've had their Bible story and some music through a video on, online. And one of the songs that they sang this week as part of their VP Vacation Bible School, BBBS, Virtual Vacation Bible School this week, was a, a song called God of Wonders. Uh, this week as they talked about a journey to Mars and exploring the galaxy for things like thankfulness and helpfulness and kindness and, and these types of, of qualities. Um, they also talked about the, uh, the miracles of God's creation. And, and so this morning we wanted to include that song uh, so that some of the kids that learned that this week would be able to sing along with us. So you would join in singing.
very good uh, to, to, to be here at God's house. Uh, looking forward to a, a praiseworthy time where we regather. It comes time to pray, prayer and praise times, and we want to be reminded uh, about this time that, that, that we're looking forward to, God willing, in just a week from now. I want to pray that everything goes according to His purpose. I want to pray that uh, God's glorified in it. I want to pray that everybody's safe. Continue to pray for our church uh, in general as God continues to direct us in, in the way that He'd have us to go. And we just want God to be honored through it. Um, we uh, are certainly praying for our church leadership, uh, wrestling with some very difficult decisions and such. Just, just keep them in your prayers. Keep uh, our pastor and uh, his wife in your prayers. Uh, let's um, continue to lift up this nation. Pray for healing in the nation. Pray for our leaders in the nation also wrestling with some very difficult decisions. Uh, we're just lifting up uh, those folks as well. Uh, let's continue to pray for our medical workers and, and first responders as uh, they're fighting this illness here. Let's continue to lift them up. Specifically, I want to mention um, a young man uh, by the name of Orion Coughlin. Um, he had a stroke this, this past week, and uh, it, the, the doctors think it may have uh, affected his, uh, his brain stem. Just really pray for this young man, pray for his family. Um, they, they're, they're local folks in Statesboro. Just, uh, if you would, just pray that God will uh, perform a miracle in his life. And, and also uh, just be with that, that family and that you provide the comfort there that, that they need during this time. If you would, join me in prayer. Our God and our Father, Lord, we come to you today thanking you for who you are. We thank you that we have the victory through you, through your Son, Jesus. Remind us of that, Lord. Remind us of that constantly when things seem to be down and, and things seem to just not be going our way. When things seem to be spinning out of control, remind us that you've given us that victory. Lord, we know it's only possible through your Son, Jesus. We thank you for sending it to us. Lord, I lift up to you all those that we've mentioned on our prayer list, God. And I just pray that your holy hand of healing be upon this young man. Touch him, Lord. Be with this family. And, and may they sense your presence now. And God, I lift up to you our nation. Desperately needs healing. It desperately needs you. Lord, I pray that you commissioned us as the church, as your hands and feet, to minister out there the gospel of Christ and help us to do so with a boldness, Lord. And Lord, I pray for our church. I pray that you continue to guide it, strengthen us, and show us, Lord, the way that we should go to bring much glory to your name. Lord, again, we do thank you for our hope. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who taught us to pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Today our, our scripture reading comes from Acts chapter 7, verses 55 through 60. I want you to hear these words. It's, uh, it's about when Stephen was, uh, was being martyred, basically. He was, he was being killed by the people. And it, says, it, says, it says, But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him, dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. As, as we look at this, this account of Stephen in the last few seconds of his life, it, it, it comes back to us what we've seen recently in the news. And I don't know about y'all, but it, it just it still tears at my heart to think about some of the things we've seen on live TV and, 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 and all. And so we can relate to it a lot better than we've ever been able to relate to this passage probably. But we need to understand who Stephen was. Stephen was one of the seven chosen by the disciples to distribute food. If you remember the first of Acts, there were some of the widows that weren't receiving the, the daily rations of food that the church was giving out. And so they went to the disciples and they asked, you know, please don't overlook us. And they said, you know, our job really is to preach and teach and to be ministering. We need to raise up some other men and, uh, and, and you got to remember it's a very patriarchal time. We've got to raise up some men and, uh, and have them deal with this daily distribution. So he was one of those seven that they, uh, that they chose to be a part of that. Stephen was filled with the Holy Spirit. And, and he, had, he had done many wondrous acts and, and, uh, and, and signs and, and, and miracles. And it was just a... He, he was considered a very holy man. And as we, we look at this account we see some lessons that we can learn from Stephen. Because today as we look at this passage, I want us to think of in, the terms of, in, in two terms. Victim or victor. We can choose to be a victim of what's going on, or we can choose to be a victor when we choose to follow God. Stephen in this could have easily been a victim. But because of who he was, because of his very nature, we find that he became a victor through this. Stephen teaches us, though, to be aware of how we are living. We need to be mindful of how we're living our lives. Are we living lives that are according to God's will for us? We have to be aware of, of how we're living. We have to decide how... How are we going to live our lives out? And who are we going to follow? We have to be aware of who we are letting lead our lives. That's a very important thing right now. As I've been trying to, 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 to come up with this plan for our church to come back together next week, it, it's just been really on me heavy. And, and those of you that know me and know me well know I am not a detailed person. No amens on that way. Uh, I, I'm a big picture guy. And this has caused me to have to dive in to the details. And, uh, and, and that's just not my forte. That's not where my gifts are. And, and, uh, and, and I've had to decide, who am I going to let lead me through this? I started listening to the CDC and, and the World Health Organization, WHO, and, and what I found was they don't agree on anything. Our, our president and our governor, they're not in agreement on things. I have to listen to the bishop in our cabinet, and, and they have certain protocol that they want us to go by, and then Connectional Ministries has others. And, and, and what I found is a lot of it is, is def, differing, and it, it pulls me in a lot of different ways. And I had to sit down, and I had to pray, okay, God, who do I listen to? And it kind of hit me like a Mack truck 
when God really spoke to my heart and says, listen to me, just listen to me. Follow what I'm putting on your heart. And, and, and I, was, I was sitting there talking with my wife, and I told her, I said, you know, I said, I'm at the point now where it doesn't matter what people say. I'm going to do what I feel like is right in the eyes of God and what's right for our church by the way God lead me. I said, some people may be happy, some may not, but I've got to do where, what God has called me to do. That's where Stephen was. I can relate to that because he had to do what he felt like God was leading him to do. Stephen allowed God to lead him even when it took him into some dangerous places. I don't know about y'all, but it's scary right now. Uh, I feel kind of weird going out in public. But there's also this part of me that yearns to be with my church family, to be with, 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 with the fellowship of believers. You know, there's, there's something about us just being together and worshiping God. And, and, and for me, that's huge, uh, to, to be around others. I've had some people say, well, you know, well, if the sanctuary is packed, we've got to go into overflow. I could sit home and watch, watch that on screen. Yeah, you could, but there's going to be other people there. We'll be within the body of believers. And that, to me, is what's so important, is for the church family to be together. So we have to understand that, that sometimes when we allow God to lead us, He leads us into what we may feel is some dangerous places. But I firmly believe that God is going to carry us through that time. God's going to watch out for us and, 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 and make that way for us to be able to come together. It's going to be different, but, but it's, going to be, it's going to be great. It'll be new. Now, y'all, don't come to me with this new normal jump. There ain't nothing normal about what's going on in the world today. I, I, and people talk about this new norm. No, it's not. It's not normal. There's nothing about it that is. You can't convince me of that for nothing. But there is going to be a new way of us having to do things. And I think it's going to be okay. Because I feel like God has given us a chance to reset. To, to reconfigure how church works. And us set some of the man-made stuff and some of our own ideals to the side so that we can truly get to the pure, real, authentic worship of God. It's going to be kind of scary. We're going to feel like God's leading us to a dangerous place, but it's going to be okay. You've also got to be aware of where you are looking. Stephen could have easily looked at that crowd of people who were getting ready to kill him. He could have easily looked at Saul, and remember who Saul is, after he was blinded by the light, not the song, but the actual light. Uh, he became Paul, but he was the one that ordered the death of many Christians. How's the young Saul that they were laying the, 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 the coats down for? He could have easily looked at him. But he chose to focus on God. And as he focused on the heavens and saw God, he saw Jesus Christ at the right hand of God. <laughs> Could you imagine that? What a wonderful experience for him. He's, he knows he's fixing to die. He knows these people are fixing to do some really cruel things to him. But he looks up and there's God. And to the right hand of God is Jesus Christ. What a more beautiful picture can, can, can we ever even imagine? Stephen watched where he was looking. His focus remained on God throughout the whole thing. Even when everything around him was chaotic, Stephen stayed focused on God. He was watching for God and all of that. And, and to me, that was beautiful. He could have cowered down and, and focused on the, the men that were around him, but instead, he looked up. And he focused on God. 
the thing that we, can, we also learn from Stephen is to be aware of who you are depending on in life. Be aware of who you're depending on in life. You know, far too often, we depend on people in life. Far too often, we depend on material things. I don't know about y'all, but about three months ago, all of that rug was pulled right out from underneath us. And we've realized we couldn't depend on a lot of the things that we had always depended upon. And the beauty of this time, if you can imagine, is that families came back together. They ate dinner together. They spent time together to the point where we probably got on each other's nerves. Pray for Tris, please. Uh, but but it, it changed everything. And it made us refocus on God. Depending on God in our life rather than the things of the world. Stephen teaches us to lean on God. Lean on God rather than the leaning on our own understanding. Man, I, we had our year mapped out. Tris and I are about, we're supposed to be leaving on a cruise next week. Nah, that didn't happen. Earlier in May, we were supposed to spend time with her family, surprising her, her, her dad and, and stepmom with a trip to the beach. Nah, that didn't happen. We had our own understanding of how life was supposed to go. And that was jerked out from underneath us. And so we had to refocus. We had to refocus and, and, and start to, to look at things a lot differently. And I know for me, it meant that I depended on God. And it brought it to a new level. And as I look at this story of Stephen, I see so many parallels to what's going on today. You know, we could, we could roll over and allow this virus to hold us as victims. We could allow it to pull us down. But we have to make a conscious decision. A conscious decision that says, I'm going to be a victor over this. I'm going to find victory. And that victory is going to come through my God. That's why I love to sing a victory in Jesus, because it's through Jesus that we gain our victory. And the world may see us as victims. Look at how the church was, was completely shut down, so the world thought. And a lot of people thought, that, thought of the church as victims. But it's through God that we came out as in victory. Because we've been able to reach even more people through the technology and all these electronics and things. I've said it before and I'll say it over and over again. I've never saw the value in Facebook other than just keeping up with people. But recently, it's been pretty valuable. It's allowed us to come into people's homes and be able to worship with them all over the place. It's allowed us to be able to, to, to spend time uh, in, 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 in ministry through social media. And so it's through God that the church has become victors. It's through God that we have become victors because God has used those things to bring everything up. Our church was, was reaching a, a good many people, but when we start looking at the numbers we reach now through social media, through the website and all that, we have increased fourfold. That's mind-boggling to me. It amazes me. My mom's shocked that my son is a televangelist now. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Uh, I've got teachers that are still in shock over that one. Uh, but, but it's been great to see how God has brought us victory when we could have easily become victims and rolled over and said, well, we just can't do church. I'm so thankful for a staff. I'm so thankful for a staff that had the tenacity of the strongest Georgia Bulldog that there's ever been. That said, no, we're going we're gonna to keep moving. And we're going to keep moving forward. And when one of us felt like giving up, the others would push us along. And it's through that that we've been able to reach lives during this time. And to me, that is so exciting. We could have easily become victims. 
But it's through God that we became victors. And we own, we own a victory. To me, it's, it's so exciting as, as we're preparing to come back together. Because I can see how there was times where we would leave out of here late at night at the first of this. And, uh, and I know Joey and Joshua give me a big amen on this. That we were just ready to throw in the towel. It's too much. It's too, too many issues. Too many different things to try to figure out. And the next morning, I'm getting texts from them way before I wanted to wake up. Say, we got this figured out. It's been beautiful to see that. It's been, it's been heart-wrenching to me to see how, how, how God has steadily worked through us and, and worked us through these things. And what I see is that we have gained a victory. In Scripture, we can look at Stephen and say, you know, he was a victim. But I want you to realize that Stephen was a victor. He wasn't a victim. He was a victor, not a victim. He had victory because he stayed focused on God. He let God lead his life. He was aware of what was going on around him, and he stayed focused on God. And it's through it all that we see him come out with victory. Scripture tells us, and I love the way it ends. It doesn't say he died. It doesn't say he was killed. It doesn't say he was martyred. It says this, it says, And when he had said this, he fell asleep. I picture that he fell asleep in the arms of his Savior, Jesus Christ. We can decide today, are we going to be victims? Or are we going to have victory? That's the choice that we have to make. And it depends on who we're focused on. It depends on who we let lead our lives. And it's whether we're aware of our surroundings and that God has got us surrounded. Today I ask you, are you a victim or are you a victor? That's your decision. You have to decide how you're going to live your life. I choose to watch Stephen and learn from him. He could have been focused on all the bad going around, but instead he looked to the heavens. He saw God and he saw Christ. And it's through that he had victory. I challenge you. Let's be victors, not victim. Let me pray for you. God, I thank you. Teach us how we should live our lives. And Father, although Stephen was, was killed in such a barbaric way, we can still see that he had victory because he stayed focused on you. God, we're living in a time of uncertainty right now. We're living in a time where, where we don't know what tomorrow holds, but God, if we think back three, four months ago, we didn't know what tomorrow held either then. But Lord, let us look to you to put our trust in you, to put our lives in your hands so that we may have victory. God, if there's any today that's hearing this message that doesn't know you as their God. They don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They don't understand the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray that they would open their hearts right now and accept you so that they may come to understand the meaning of true victory. Oh God, help us. Help us to be victors and not victims. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to invite you to sing along.